Welcome to worship for Calvary Lutheran Church in Canyon Country and St. John's Lutheran Church in Tarzana. Pleasure to worship with you this day. Today is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. I'll be following the order of service as you can find printed in the service folder, which is available from the link underneath this video. Let us begin with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. <coughs> Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse 9 and reading through verse 18. He came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, or suddenly came to him, saying, Why are you here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies, but the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is passing by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a soft whispering voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and he went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. Then a voice came to him and said, why are you here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies, but the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the wilderness of Damascus. 
When you get there, you are to anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You will also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king over Israel, and Elisha, Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mahola as prophet in your place. But who, whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. But I have prepared, preserved in Israel 7,000 whose knees have not bent to Baal and whose lips have not kissed him. This is the word of our Lord. <coughs> Let us join in reading responsively the words of Psalm 73. I am always with you, O Lord. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Our second lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1, reading through verse 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continuous pain in my heart. For I almost wish that I myself could be cursed and separated from Christ in the place of my brothers, my relatives according to the flesh, those who are Israelites. Theirs are the adoption as sons, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them according to the flesh came the Christ, who is God over all, eternally blessed. Amen. This is the word of our God. Alleluia. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Alleluia. <laughs> words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our gospel this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, reading verses 22 through 33. Immediately, Jesus urged the disciples to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed the crowd, he went up onto the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. By then, the boat was quite a distance from shore being pounded by the waves because the wind was against it. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and cried out in fear, it is a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Peter stepped down from the boat, walked on the water, and went toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he was afraid. As he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. Those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue with our hymn of the day, By Grace I'm Saved, number 384. <coughs>
am saved, grace free and boundless. My soul believe and doubt it not. Why waver at this word of promise? As scripture ever falsehood taught, so that this word must true remain. By grace you too shall have obtain. By grace God's Son, our only Savior, came down to earth to bear our sin. Was it because of your own merit that Jesus died your soul to win? No, it was grace and grace alone that brought him from his heavenly throne. By grace, O oh, mark this word of promise when you are by your sins oppressed. When Satan plagues your troubled conscience, and when your heart is seeking rest, what reason cannot comprehend God by his grace to you did send? By grace to timid hearts that tremble In tribulation's furnace tried By grace despite all fear and trouble The Father's heart is open wide where could I help and strength secure if grace were not my anchor sure? By grace on this I'll rest when dying. In Jesus' promise I rejoice. For though I know my heart's condition, I also know my Savior's voice. My heart is glad all grief has flown, since I am saved by grace alone. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our gospel this morning, we see Jesus and his disciples just after the feeding of the 5,000. And we have Jesus sending his disciples quite quickly and urgently onto a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee ahead of him. Now, it's not so much that they had somewhere urgent to be, but Jesus knew his disciples needed to get away from these crowds because the crowds had gotten some strange ideas after the feeding of the 5,000. They had decided that Jesus giving them food to eat was a really good gig and they should just make Jesus their king so they have free food every day. Jesus does not want his disciples tempted by this kind of short-sighted, foolish thinking and so he sends them on ahead while he dismisses the crowd himself before they can act on their impulses. Because setting up an earthly kingdom was never part of his plan or purpose for being here. He came to be the sacrifice for sin, to be the world's redeemer, to go to the 
so that the punishment of God's wrath over sin and wickedness would be on him and the righteousness that he lives and won, he gives to all as a free gift. None of this could be done if he stopped all of that to be the bread king for the people. So as he removes this temptation from both his disciples and himself by disp dispersing the crowd, he then spends some time praying before going to catch up with the disciples who are on the boat. In that intervening time, the disciples have had a pretty rough go of it. The winds have kicked up. The waves have battered against their boat that they are trying to row across the sea. They have not made progress as swiftly or as easily as they expected to. And when Jesus catches up to them in the middle of the night, they are stressed and they are worried and they are frightened. After all of the exertion of struggling against the wind and the waves that are battering their boat, when they see Jesus miraculously walking across the waves, their instant reaction is, it's a ghost, and they are afraid. It's not until Jesus speaks to them those words of comfort, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid, that they realize who he is and they put their confidence in him once again. That powerful command from Jesus to take heart and not be afraid is so uplifting, so energizing, that Peter says, Lord, please let me come out to you on the water. And Jesus tells them to come. And then we see Peter, with his eyes focused on Jesus, take at least a few steps out there on the sea. But after those first few steps, he gets distracted by the wind blowing and howling around him. He takes his eyes off of Jesus and begins to be afraid of the very same storm they've been a part of. He lets that fear creep into his heart as doubt that he is really safe and secure. And he begins to sink. Jesus hasn't left Peter. Jesus has never failed Peter. And so rather than let him dip below the waves, the Lord reaches out his hand, grabs Peter, saves him. Just as Peter's short but to the point prayer, Lord save me, it asked. And then Jesus asks Peter the question that we should all reflect on today. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? At that moment, as Peter would have looked back at the immediate 30 seconds before, he would have instantly recognized that there is no good answer to that question, right? Nothing had changed for Peter. The storm had been raging all night. It didn't stop when he asked Jesus to come out there. Jesus hadn't left or walked away. The Lord's power over the heavens and the earth, it had not faded or faltered. The Lord's words of promise, he said, come, stood still ringing in the air as true. There was no reason for Peter to doubt. He was at every moment of that entire experience in the same position with his Lord who loved him.
But he doubted and feared because he was a weak, sinful man and he took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the troubles and trials and struggles around him, the terrors of the storm. My brothers and sisters, we find ourselves quite often in this position Peter is in. Not walking on the water and the Sea of Galilee, but being called to trust the Lord and then doubting him. We have joined this congregation and gathered around the word of God because we are people of faith who trust their Lord because the Holy Spirit has worked that faith in our hearts. And every day we take those first few steps of confidence and certainty on what our God has said. Those steps of trust that know that he has promised he is always with us, he will never leave us, he will not forsake us. We are his own dearly loved children. We are his heirs of eternal life. We are as secure and safe and certain as anyone can possibly be. Because the God of all creation, the Lord of heaven and earth, the one who speaks and things come into being has proclaimed it so. We are his. And yet as we take our steps towards him, so often our weak, sinful flesh draws our eyes away from Jesus towards the storm of troubles and trials and hardships around us, whatever they may be. Whether it's pandemic or the loss of our jobs, whether it's the death of a loved one, sickness, loneliness and separation, hardship of any and every sort, the consequences of living in a sinful world whirl and swirl around us, storming away every moment of every day. Those things don't really actually change. We may be ignored, but they stay there. And the promises of our God never change either. Our reasons for confidence stay the same. God has proclaimed us his dearly loved children. Christ's death on the cross has paid for our sin. His resurrection from the grave has assured us of our victory. He has gone to prepare a place for us in heaven. And when we take our eyes off Jesus, we lose sight of that confidence we should have. We let the fear and the doubt creep in where there should really be faith. But thankfully our God does not abandon us to our doubts. Just like he didn't abandon Peter there that day, he grabs hold of us again, repeats his promises to us again, in the words of the scripture, he sends that Holy Spirit to fill our hearts again with the trust that his word is true, with the proclamation that our sins are forgiven, with the reality that our inheritance, inheritance is in heaven, and that no suffering we can face on earth can take that away from us. And that the treasure he has stored up for us there far surpasses anything this world could offer. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is with us. In times of pandemic, in times of prosperity, in times of sadness, in times of joy, our Lord never leaves us. 
His promises never falter or fumble or change. Our God does not fail his people. And so we can have the utter confidence to go forward on our journey every day, our steps towards him, knowing he's not going to let us down. We can go forward without fear of what this world may throw at us because our Savior who loves us is with us. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we don't need to take threats to our health or well-being seriously. We do. Nor am I saying we should ignore uh, warnings or dangers that are around us. We should act in wisdom. But in all that we do, our actions should be actions not of fear, but of trust. And even as we take those safety precautions that are necessary, we do so not out of fear of what a virus might do to us, but we do so in confidence to use the blessings God has given us to the best of our ability, and with the certainty that no matter what happens to us, he is working it for our good, he is keeping us safe in his everlasting arms, he will bring us to be with him in heaven. It's hard. It requires the work of God strengthening and reinforcing and building up our faith constantly to stand in that kind of confidence. But he's promised to do that through his word too. My brothers and sisters, let us stay in the word of God, stay in the confidence of keeping our eyes on the Savior, let us pray throughout any trial or temptation. Lord, teach us to trust you always. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join in praying responsibly the prayer for Sundays after Thanksgiving, or after Pentecost. O oh Lord our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your hope. We bring you requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Help us find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Give us teachers and students who pursue excellence. 
strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Lead us to love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you also our private petitions. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught, with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. We join also in the prayer you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against against temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We conclude with our closing hymn, To God Be the Glory, number 399. Amen. Redemption, the purge 
Precious of blood to every believer the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our joy and our wonder when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Once again, good morning and welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us for this online worship service. Uh, a reminder, if you would like to receive the Lord's Supper, please do not hesitate to contact me. I would be uh, very happy to set up a time to meet with you and administer the sacrament so that the Lord's body and blood be not neglected in this time. God's blessings on your weeks.